So in this video, we're gonna be talking all about prioritization and delegation, helping you to better understand what is the different role between the CNA versus the LPN versus the RN. So if you need to know prioritization and delegation very well, go ahead and watch this video all the way to the very end. Okay, so let's talk all about helping you to better understand the different roles. Especially when it comes to your nursing exams, it's important that you clearly have a very clear distinction between what each of them actually does. And so we can talk about, first we'll discuss about CNA, right? Which is also referred to on some exams as UAP, all right? So CNA stands for Certified Nursing Assistant or UAP, you may see that also on the exam, unlicensed assistant professional. Those two terms are usually used interchangeably when it comes to um, your nursing exams or NCLEX exam, all right? So just be aware they're essentially the same thing. So first, understanding now, what does the CNA or the UAP do? The CNA is responsible for handling patient hygiene needs, their ADLs, toileting, and then vitals. These are some of the things that they have to do. And then also as well, intake and output, all right? Intake and output. So with the CNA, they help with collecting information, but they're not supposed to assess that information essentially, right? So their, their role is not evaluating what the information means, the role is to gather the information and then report it to the nurse, right? Report it to the RN or the LPN. And so what you have to understand for the exam is that you may get questions where it's trying to test your understanding as far as when does the RN or the LPN, when do you intervene when it comes to what they do, right? So... For example, let's say you have a question where it says that um, it says that the patient just had surgery, right? So the patient just had surgery, and they had surgery. The type of listed surgery they had was um, a cardiac catheterization, right? And so, and you see the CNA, right? getting ready to assist the patient to the bathroom. All right, so let me post let me post this on the screen for you to see. All right, so you have a question, all right? And the question says that the page, you had a patient that just had surgery and they had a cardiac cath done and you see the CNA is gonna help them to the bathroom, right? This is the part where you have to do your critical thinking, nursing judgment, right? So going to the bathroom, helping the patient go to the bathroom, that's the thing that a CNA is supposed to do, yes, right? But however, though, if the patient has had a cardiac catheterization, the rule is that once they do that surgery, the patient has to stay in bed for at least four to six hours. They cannot get up at all. It's totally, completely strict. So if that happened, what would you do? Would you just watch and be like, okay, yeah, let them go to the bathroom? Or would you intervene and say, no, don't, don't, no, don't help them go to the bathroom. They need to stay in the bed, right? So there, they, so that's the difference is that when it comes to your nursing exams, you need to be aware of what the nurse, what the role of the CNA can normally do, which is help, you know assist into the bathroom. But you have to apply nursing judgment from a case by case scenario. If there are certain nursing precautions that needs to be adhered to, based on that scenario, all right. So that's the part where you have to implement that nursing judgment because. The CNA, their job is just to do what they do, you know, blankly, right? Without, you know, but you, but you though, because you are the RN or you're the LPN, 
you have to apply additional judgment and, and, and inform the CNA so they're aware. All right, so that's one of the biggest things is to realize that role. The second thing now is let's talk about the LPN. Now, LPN role can vary from different types of states, all right? Different states, it's not the same. So for the LPN, the LPN is, is similar to the RN, but it's not the same. So typically when it comes to nursing exams, the, the LPN cannot assess and is not supposed to give any type of IV medications, like IV, either IV push, IV piggyback, IV anything. All right. So typically, that's usually what the standard or rule of thumb is: is that is no IV and no assessment for LVN. All right, LVN or LPN, same thing. So what you have to realize when it comes to nursing exams, or another one too, when it says assess is identify, okay, will this patient need new assessment? So if you have a question that says the patient just got back from surgery, that would not be appropriate to delegate typically to the LPN because that requires new assessment, right? Because they came back from surgery, so now they're going to, you need to evaluate them to see you know, their pain level, to look at the, the surgery site, to see what their vitals are, to see if if there's any type of complications that may be occurring, that wouldn't be appropriate to the LPN. So when you're getting questions or you're trying to decipher if it's appropriate for LVN or not, you need to evaluate, okay, if this requires new assessment, then it's not appropriate. If this requires, you know, the constant administration of IV push meds, then it's not appropriate. Or IV medications, then it's not appropriate. That's essentially how you decipher when it comes to the meds. The last one is going to be the RN, the registered nurse. So the registered nurse is the one that's required, is responsible for doing pretty much essentially the entire nursing process. Everything from assessing, diagnosing, planning, implementation, evaluation. The registered nurse can do all those roles as well as also give IV push meds and IV you know, any type of IV um, infusion, et cetera. Now, however, though, when it comes to exams, there is a difference, though, between uh, the, the registered nurse that's experienced versus the registered nurse that's a new grad, right? So if you have a, reg so if you have a patient that requires more complicated care, a patient that is less stable, you know, and that would typically not be ideal for the new grad nurse, right? Versus if you have a patient that is more stable, the vitals are a bit consistent, the patient requires some education, that's perfect for the new grad nurse. So these are some of the different things you wanna be aware of when it comes to really understanding the difference between what the CNA does, LPN does versus RN does when it comes to prioritization and delegation for your nursing exams. If you feel like you really need more help to better understanding this material, go ahead and click below this video to get access to some of my resources on our website, bit.ly slash choose a nursing shop, bit.ly slash choose a nursing shop. Either click below, below this, above this video in the description to get access to the, our books. So whether it's our books, um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see that. our books, our classes, our courses, our audios, our downloadable PDF guides. It will help you to better understand this material so you can retain it and you can pass your exams. So click below for more information and go to comment below the video and let me know what you took away from it, what questions you have, or you know how you found it to be helpful to you. All right, like the video as well. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribing and go ahead and stay tuned and watch this video as well. If you're finding this video helpful, then you're definitely gonna wanna watch my free NCLEX webinar training where I reveal what are the real-time secrets that I'm currently teaching my students that results in hundreds of repeat test takers finally passing the NCLEX exam. This is a training where I walk you through step-by-step 
What are some of the common myths and mistakes that you may be making that is resulting in you not passing your exam or not passing it when you do take it? In addition, you will get a free PDF bonus that will narrow down your focus so you know what to start doing right now to ensure you pass this test regardless of how many times you have taken it or how long you've been out of school. By the time you are finished with this training, you'll know exactly what you need to do so you can secure your nursing license and land your dream nursing job. Simply press the free training link either above or below this video to get access to it 